Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, wow, look at this. Waitakere is a city of rivers and streams. There are lots of them, running along, beside or crossing under the roads, in behind the car parks or in your back garden. They all have life in them. Most of our streams are small, and many of them are important for the native fish, shrimps and other animals that live there. In Waitakere, researchers are collecting animals from the beds of streams and rivers and identifying them. This information is important because the kinds of bugs found in the streams can tell us how healthy the streams really are. Looking closely at any river to see which macroinvertebrates are most common can tell us heaps about the water quality and other things, like whether there is enough shade from plants on the banks, whether the water is cool enough for some species, the amount of food available, or even the amount of oxygen dissolved in the water for the animals to breathe. Most stream animals survive best in cool, fast-flowing water with almost no sediment in it. They also need food, including the green and brown algae that grow on the rocks, or other animals that graze on it. Some animals slump the little particles out of the water or scavenge on the rocks. Many stream invertebrates are small enough to live under and between the rocks or hidden among the water plants. Also hiding among the rocks and plants are the fish like different kinds of bullies and banded kokapu. Stephen and Ruby are expecting to find some animals that can live only in cool, clear water. They have chosen this part of the river, up here in the bush, for this video, so that they can show us the kinds of animals found in healthy rivers. I'm sampling in the soft sediment here. I'm going to go up in the vegetation on the side of the bank. Also we've got woody debris, logs like this in the water. These are houses for lots of invertebrates. So just wash that down into the net and sweep up anything that's been dislodged. This is what we call kick sampling. We're just stirring up the bed, dislodging animals that are holding onto the stones, and we're simply going to collect them in a net. You could use a kitchen sieve if you don't have a net, and we're just going to place them into a nice white tray where we'll be able to see them moving. Now that we've collected our sample, we're going to uh, work out what we've got in here. And we've got this sheet here, which is quite, it's divided into three sections, and we've got the green, the green invertebrates up here, which are the ones that you only find in really good pristine streams, the yellow boxes here which are ones that are in moderate streams and these ones here which you, own, you find in streams that are poor quality. And here, here we have a swimming mayfly. There's another one. Swimming mayflies really like this cold water. They are ideal signs of good water quality. And let's have a look at one up close. Nizamelitis is a swimming mayfly, hence the fish-like shape and three tufted tails which helps it with a bit of extra propulsion. This is Colobriscus, the spiny gill mayfly. This is a good example of an invertebrate that's quite specific to clean, cold, well oxygenated waters. They can't move their gills around to get oxygen flowing past the body. Zephlebia, as you can see, has got three long tails, unlike colobriskets, that's got two long and one short. You can see the gills beating to keep that flow of oxygen past the body. Like most mayflies, Zephlebia is one of the grazers. They'll scrape algae and other material off the surfaces of stones. Right, this is Ostraclima, another one of the double gill mayflies. You can see the gills thrashing around there. They're quite skinny gills. Ostraclima is one of the smaller mayflies, and quite often fairly dark in colour. But we can see quite a lot of detail here under this magnification. Covering the middle of the body are the wings forming on the body of the mayfly. So just like all the other mayflies, those wings are just gradually growing through the life of the nymph, and eventually the animal will have a final molt. The skin will be split down the middle, and the adult will emerge. What would eat a mayfly? Mayflies are a really nice juicy mouthful for freshwater fish, so generally they're undercover, they're attached to services, into crevices, and um, most of them only really come out at night, so they're trying to avoid being seen. The stoneflies are a very temperature sensitive group. Almost all of them prefer really cold water. The stoneflies are distinguished from the mayflies in that they've only got two tails. 
This particular stonefly belongs to a group that has a little tuft of gills between the two tails. There you can see the two wings forming. So this stonefly will probably soon reach the adult stage, emerge from the water and fly off to lay eggs somewhere. Here's a little stick caddis, it's a little insect with his home inside a piece of wood. Those guys do really well in streams like this with lots of bush cover. Some stick caddises, triplectides, use a solid piece of stick. Others compile their case out of lots of small bits of stick. And this particular one has made his case out of bits of leaf. Hydrobiosis belongs to a group of caddisflies known as free-living caddisflies. They are not tied to any sort of shelter at all. Costa Karima is another free-living caddis with a very dark head. Neurocarima is another one of those free-living caddisflies that are usually found in good water quality. These guys don't have any external gills at all. For them, breathing may simply be through the surface of the body. This freshwater crayfish is a nice example of the sort of animal you might find in a high quality stream. And they are just constantly foraging, looking for stuff to feed on. Okay, this is the freshwater shrimp paratia. Paratia is found in coastal streams all around the country. They live part of their lives in freshwater and part of their lives in seawater. Latia is the freshwater limpet. It has the distinction of being the world's only entirely freshwater animal that can glow in the dark. It seems to be a defence mechanism. Like a squid or an octopus releasing a cloud of black ink, Latia releases a mini cloud of glow-in-the-dark mucus. Potamopurgus snails. These guys, like the shrimps, are quite tolerant. You'll find them in high quality streams and you'll find them in some quite degraded streams. As part of this research, I visited a site lower down in the river system, closer to the coast. At this point, the river still has a stony bed, but the water is slower and there's more fine sediments amongst the stones. The elmids and worms make their homes amongst the sediment. There are some big trees upstream of the sampling site and they provide woody debris to the stream. This is handy for the freshwater crabs that like to hide in the hollows of rotting bits of wood. The other animals that I found here are typical of a site that has warmer water and less dissolved oxygen. These animals, like the worms, midges and leeches, are more tolerant of such conditions and of the pollution that gets into the stream from roads and the city area. We need to increase streamside replanting and reduce stormwater pollution from homes and cars. At the moment, streams in urban areas often are too polluted for animals like freshwater crayfish to survive. Some of the other animals that I found at the downstream site, like Latia, are also found here at this native bush site. So looking at this tray, we can make some assumptions about the stream that we've just sampled. And you can see we've got lots of mayflies up here. They're indicative of good stream water quality. And we've got a good range of caddisflies here as well. Good diversity there. And only a few down in this uh, lower section. So in general, this I'd say the stream's a pretty good stream. Right. So essentially there's lots of life, there's lots of different types, and some of the things that were most abundant were the sensitive animals. Yes. So we can say the stream's in pretty good shape at the moment. We've got lots of bankside or what they call riparian vegetation, mm -hmm. and that really helps. If people can keep streams reasonably well shaded to stop stream water warming up, that's a big important point. There's good fast flow, that helps these mayflies and stoneflies. The bed's nice and clean, there hasn't been a lot of sediment discharged into the stream. We haven't seen any rubbish in the stream, and we're high up in the catchment too, so there hasn't been a lot of uh, development of the land. So there's not a lot of extra nutrients getting into the stream from farmland or from waste discharges. So for lots of reasons, the stream's in pretty good shape. I hope you've enjoyed exploring the stream with us. And let's put these animals back where we found them. This video was produced by Waitakere City Council in support of classroom programs. For more detailed information about macroinvertebrates found in Waitakere rivers, visit the stormwater and underwater life pages of the Auckland Council website www.aucklandcouncil.govt.nz or call us on 09 301 0101 to talk to a stormwater education and community programs advisor.